Hi and welcome back. In previous videos we've been looking at documents and distances between documents. Now we're going to try to have the computer learn by itself how to create clusters that contain similar types of documents. We're going to look at a specific algorithm to do this called k-means. In general we're going to be doing a process called unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, we give the computer data without telling it what are the categories that we want the computer to be looking for. In supervised learning, for example, we would tell it, oh, some things in the world are apples, some things are bananas, and some things are mangoes. You need to extract the characteristics that make something a mango, and then once you've extracted that information, you're going to get new information and you have to decide if this has the same characteristics as something you determined to be a mango. That is supervised learning. In unsupervised learning, the computer is going to get raw data and is going to try to figure out whether two objects are similar or not. If two objects are similar, the computer is going to try to put them in the same cluster. In doing this, it's going to be doing a kind of learning and of uh, getting new information out of this because it will determine that objects that are um, apple-like will go in this cluster, uh, objects that are banana-like are going to go here, and objects that are mango-like are going to go here. Again, in unsupervised learning, we don't provide labels for the data. We just give the data as is and tell the computer to try to find the similarities in between them. Clustering is one application of this. In order for the computer to perform clustering, we need to solve several problems. The, the most obvious one is, how is it going to measure distance? How is it going to know if two things are close together or very far apart? We're going to need to implement some measure of distance. Also, um, we are going to have to figure out if our clusters are well separated so that there's uh, very, a very clear description of them, or maybe the clusters are going to overlap and the edges are going to be a little blurry. We're going to have to think about this. Also, we need to think about how many dimensions or features we're going to have. How many di different dimensions of information are we going to give the computer for it to try to extract information out of this? For now, let's assume that we're going to have some sort of Euclidean distance where um, we can measure distance by uh, subtracting the value in each dimension. Um, let's assume that our clusters are going to be fairly well separated, that they're not going to overlap a lot. And for this exercise, let's assume we only have two features or two dimensions, some measurement in the x-axis, some measurement in the y-axis. Assuming that, let's experiment with an algorithm called k-means. k-means is, me is a technique to partition a set of data into k different groups. So you need to tell the computer how many groups you want it to find. This number is going to be k. The computer is going to try to find k number of separations according to how similar several points are. Let's say we begin with something like this. We have a bunch of data points in two-dimensional space, so x and y. And on visual examination, you can look that you can see that maybe there's three clusters. Towards the left, there's one. Towards the right, there's another. And there's some. There's another one below. Let's say we begin with that, and then we tell the computer, "Computer, find me three clusters in that data." The first thing that k-means is going to do is drop three points at random. Maybe they'll be all in the same position. Maybe they will be very separated. It's going to put three places, three centers at random on the surface. 
and then it's going to try to measure the distance between that random center and every other data point. When it does that, it's going to associate the data point with the closest random center, such as we have here. In there, only one of the data points is closest to the red dot than to the other dots. So this data point will be associated with the red dot. There's one, two, three, four, five, six data points that are associated with the green center. So they are associated to this green center there. There's one, two, three, four, five blue data points that are associated with the blue center. So we associate them. Notice, by the way, that this initial clustering doesn't match the intuition we had at the beginning. But again, this is just a random start. Once you have the random start, you're going to calculate a new center for the uh, cluster. So, for example, in the case of red, uh, of the red cluster, we're going to take all the data points and calculate the center of those points, which is just going to be the one point. So the center is going to move from the initial random position to that new position, to the position of the one dot that we cataloged as red. In the case of the blue center, the computer is going to average the position of all of the dots that are la labeled as green and is going to calculate the center of those. The position at which uh, the distance to all the other points is the shortest. This is going to move the center of green to a new position. It's going to do the same for blue. We have the five data points and the computer is going to calculate the center of those five data points labeled as blue. And is going to move the center of blue from its original position to this new center. When the computer moves the center to its new position, it recalculates the distance to every point. With the new red center, it calculates the distance of every data point to the new red center and, and asks which points are closer to the red center than to any of the other centers. As you can see, there's now two more data points that classify as red. There's a few data points that the green one has lost. It only has four data points now. And the blue center now has five data points. So what it did was drop centers at random, see which points were closest to the random centers, measure the position of the points that it cataloged as belonging to each of the centers and average them, and then move the random centers to this new mean. It'll continue to do that again and again until it reaches a state called convergence in which the centers are no longer moving, where um, at that point, the algorithm cannot improve upon its calculations. Here's an example with four clusters. So in stage number one, we have data that's separated in four positions. So maybe we can suggest that the computer finds four clusters there. Let's say the computer drops four random centers, as you have in um, square number two. It has two X's that randomly landed on the upper right. It has an X that landed line in the center, and it has an X that landed on the lower left. The computer is going to calculate the distance of every data point to those four X's, and then it's going to to determine that the data points closest to that X are the are those belonging to that cluster. In state three, it's, uh, the computer is going to calculate the new center. So for every point that belongs to the cluster, it's going to calculate what the center of all of those points would be. And it'll move the center from its original position to there. As you can see, the two X's on the upper right now move 
a little bit towards the center of the respective clusters. The X in the center moves just a little bit, and the X on the lower left moves towards the center of that blob in the lower left. Square 4 has the new positions and then the recalculation. So once you move the, uh, the, cluster of the, the center of the cluster to its new position, you're in the second iteration, and you recalculate. For every data point, you try to figure out which uh, center it's closest to. And then you relabel those points as belonging to that cluster. As you can see, the light blue cluster has gained a lot of data points. The red cluster remains roughly the same. The yellow cluster has shrinked a little bit, and the dark blue cluster remains fairly stable. It's going to try to do the same process. With its new set of dots, it's going to calculate a new center and then move the center towards that position. It's going to do that for all of them. And in doing this, it'll continue to explore its space until the axes are no longer moving because they've found the optimal position where they are at the center of the respective blobs. The following is an animation of this process over approximately 10 iterations. As you can see, the axes start to move. Iteration number two, three, four. And it, by now, it's separated the four blobs, but not very well. By iteration six, it's relatively stable. By iteration seven, it's barely moving. And as you can see, at this point, it's reached stability. So that's what you can see on the right on the left. On the right, you can see something called the sum of squares. So for each center, it's adding the distance between the dots in each cluster and the center. In iteration one, the distance between the centers and its allotted dots is very high because the centers are very imperfect. So they're poorly positioned. The dots are, could be coming from all over the place. The sum of square becomes smaller as you reach convergence because now the x's are in an optimal position, right at the center of the blob. So the majority of the points in the cluster are going to have very short distances. And this is going to make for smaller sums of square. I'm going to let it converge one more time. This is another example. As you can see, there's approximately three blobs there, and with each iteration, the center moves. So what this is doing is two things, three things. First, it throws random center somewhere, and as you can see in this example, they were fairly close together. It calculates the shortest distance between all the dots and those centers, uh, assigns those dots to the cluster, and then measures the new center of each cluster. And it does this in every single iteration until it's reached a stable center for the cluster, as you can see here. I'm going to let it run one more time. Nine, reaching stability, as you can see. There we go. So we do need to tell the computer how many clusters it can learn. But once we tell it that, that you need to learn three clusters, this algorithm is going to find the best way to split the data into three clusters. Again, k clustering is a technique to partition a data set into k groups. And it does so by measuring distance between objects, between a random center and all of the other documents. And it measures the distance, for uh, for example, in two dimensions. So that was the two-dimensional charts that we were looking at. But it could also do it in n-dimensional space, like with our TF-IDF matrices. K-means will start with random centers, and then it'll shift the centers around until it reaches the optimal positioning of the centers. 
in the following videos. We will look at other algorithms for clustering and how we can use these for natural language processing.